I wanted to stop in today to talk to you a little bit about a ventilator that we were able to uh, purchase with some of the grant money that was released from the federal government, um, the CARES Act grant money, and uh, ventilators fell within that category. And we were able to purchase some transport ventilators that um, we think will make a big difference in patient care as we go through um, uh, cardiac arrests and some of the patients that have some respiratory issues. And so uh, today I just wanted to show, show you the Z-Vent that we got from uh, Zoll Medical. So uh, these are currently on each of our frontline ambulances, one, uh, the, the two in Fitchburg and the one here in Verona. We've, we've used it a couple of times already. Uh, the vent is, um, allows us to provide um, a consistent uh, number of breaths per minute, um, tidal volume, so the amount of air that goes into somebody's chest, um, the percent of oxygen, and where in normal cardiac arrest, we're doing bag, va bag valve mask ventilation. Um, sometimes that can be inconsistent with just driving down the road, uh, lots of other stuff going on in the ambulance. And so the vent will allow us to set all of those parameters for a patient uh, based on their, their weight, their height, set the vent up, and, and it breathes for the patient on its own. So uh, just to demonstrate the vent here. Um, so we'll, uh, we'll turn the vent on here. So this will be the initial startup. Um, the vent will run through a self-check quick. Um, we have our test lung on here so that at least as it's breathing, it's, it's breathing into some sort of um, bellows in order for it not to alarm all the time. Um, so on the display here, it will show the tidal volume. That's something that we can adjust based on patient weight and height. There's a, we have a chart in the ambulance for that. Um, we also can set the breath rate. So we have it set at 12, you'll see on, on the vent here. We can adjust that based on the patient's end tidal or um, pulse oximetry. We can make adjustments there. Um, we can make adjustments to the, what we call the fraction of inspired air, the FiO2. We breathe as a d normal um, humans, we breathe 21%. Um, somebody that has a low pulse oximetry or is not breathing on their own, we can increase that to give them more oxygen. Uh, most of the time we'll increase it to 40%. Um, and then the other things here are just some, dis uh, some displays and that will alarm if you know, we have to um, you know, provide some airway management for somebody by suctioning them or uh, we have a leak somewhere, um, we get alarms that that happens as well. The piece of equipment, the, what we call it a circuit, um, the oxygen tubing or the, the tubing that provides the air um, connects to the top. Then we have a couple of uh, sensor tubings that go in here and that sense, senses the pressure in the patient if we need to suction somebody or if we have a leak somewhere, that's what these are for. And then in the event that we wanna apply um, more oxygen than the 21%, um, we have a, a oxygen, a long oxygen tube that can hook right onto here and that gives them uh, plenty of oxygen. The, uh, the other part of um, the, the circuit here is it does have a filter on the end so this short piece of tubing right here is where the exhalation of the patients when the patient exhales their their air comes out of here obviously um, especially patients that are really sick or that may potentially have uh, COVID-19 we want to filter that air obviously all of this is disposable uh, one time use only and then it's thrown away the other important part of the vent for us is the ability to provide uh, CPAP and BiPAP for patients that are having respiratory distress. Now we can provide CPAP now uh, with a mask such as this one where we just adjust the amount of oxygen going in, gives them the pressure. Um, for those of you that are on CPAP, you know what I'm talking about. The other important thing is that with the ventilator, um, we can provide BiPAP as well. So. Uh, where CPAP is a continuous positive airway pressure, lots of oxygen coming in at the same time continuously. BiPAP gives you pressure on insulation and exhalation. So it's much more comfortable for patients. If you've been taken to the hospital and put on BiPAP, you know that um, somebody on BiPAP breathes a lot easier if they're having respiratory distress than they are on CPAP. So the ventilator allows us to make that switch as well. And I think that's really important, especially in the time that we are with COVID, 
where we can put somebody on BiPAP. It's an enclosed system with an enclosed circuit, um, and and they can breathe on their own, and, and, and it's a little bit safer for the providers as well. So uh, a mask similar to this one is the mask that we use. Um, we turn the machine on, it runs through the same checks that it does before, and then we just, um, we just hook it up to here and it provides that continuous positive airway pressure. So just to demonstrate for a patient here, um, we've got the test lung on, otherwise it really won't breathe for the patient, but for example, uh, we have somebody, uh, one of our uh, training mannequins that is intubated here. When we're ready to go, we've turned the vent on, our vent circuit. Um, it has a filter on the end of it, so when the patient exhales, you know, we, have, we can filter that breath. Um, we would just hook it up to the patient like this. Um, and because the, the vent is not very compliant with the, the chest here, um, it, it, will, uh, it will breathe for the patient. So just to uh, make the assumption that if it's you know, breathing like this, there's air going into the chest. The reason why we looked at ventilators is for a couple of reasons. One, um, we feel that it obviously provides better patient care. So patients that are in respiratory distress, we're able to do BiPAP and CPAP. Patients that are in cardiac arrest, uh, overdose, pa overdose patients, we're able to provide a better patient, uh, better patient care when pr uh, breathing for them. Um, the other reason is that ventilators uh, fell within that category. Um, if you know, we know at the onset of the pandemic, there was some concern about the shortage of ventilators um, in the hospital setting. The crews have all gone through an extensive training on how to use the vent. Um, we've done vent training almost every, um, almost every month. We've had them on for a couple of months. We do vent training almost every month to keep up on their skills. And in fact, we've deployed the vent, I think four times total in the last 30 days. Um, and we know that it's provided better patient care because of you know, what, it, what it does is breathing for the patient as opposed to, even though we do good patient care, um, there's lots of little intricacies in running a cardiac arrest where this helps out.